Hello everyone. Welcome back to Asha.academy. Today, let me walk you through direct and indirect speech, which comes under grammar part. What is that direct and indirect speech? Let's say these two ladies speak with each other and when they want to convey the same message to someone else, then in that case, they need to make use of indirect speech. So here, indirect speech is also known as reported speech. So their communication, when they want to convey to someone else, in that case, they can make use of indirect speech or reported speech. And do you know that newspaper reporters, they make use of this reported speech. So as an onlooker, they must have observed what were the events or what were the incidents happened in, uh, uh, either in front of their eyes or they must have heard from someone else. So those uh, news will be put up there in the newspaper in the form of reported speech. So here is an example for you children. What is direct speech? Reporting the message of the speaker in the exact words as spoken by him. So direct speech, as you people do know that it is put up there within the inverted commas or quotation marks. So the exact words spoken by the speaker will be put up there within the inverted commas. That is known to be direct speech. What is that indirect speech? So when you want to write down indirect speech, what you need to do is you need to go for a certain change. That is, you need to make a few changes there in a sentence. That is, what are all the uh, changes? What you need to do here, you can see. Uh, the very first thing is you need to go for a change in the tense. Not in all the places, let me tell you when and where. Then pronouns, you need to go for a change of pronouns here. And then time expressions or adverb. And then punctuations, where to drop down punctuation marks here, whether inverted marks or quotation marks or even commas. And then where to add conjunction, that. So all these points will be taught to you now while transforming direct speech into indirect speech. So here, the very first sentence, look how lovely these children are. So here, let's assume that this is Rakshit and this is Harini. Rakshit said to Harini, comma, open the inverted comma, I am in Mumbai, full stop, close the inverted comma. So this is known to be direct speech. So the actual words, the exact words spoken by the speaker, that is Rakshit here, it has been put up here within the quotation marks. So now what are all the changes you need to do? The very first one. First of all, let's divide this into two. That is the very first part that is before comma is part one and after comma that is within inverted commas that is part two. So the very first part is known to be reporting speech and then the second part is known to be reported speech. So how to go about that is what are all the changes you need to go for now. So this set two will be changed into told while transforming direct speech into indirect speech or reported speech. This set two will be changed into told. So Rakshit told Harini and here in this place of comma and inverted comma, you need to insert the conjunction that and you need to drop down the punctuation mark that then again what you need to do this pronoun must be changed this word i must be changed according to the subject who's the subject here rakshit so that he that he so i must be changed into he and this tense must be changed why there is a change in a tense here because here, reporting speech, in this reporting speech, the verb is in past tense. So in that case, you need to change 
the tense you need to go for a change of the tense here so that's the reason why you need to write down he was in mumbai right then the next sentence for you here so here before going for the next sentence let me uh, teach you all the rules here first person i and we you people do know very clearly that i and we it changes according to the subject and second person you changes according to the object and third person there is no change at all so as you already uh, have seen this one i i and we changes according to the subject here if you get the second person second person changes according to the object here so this is the subject and this is the object so these are all the rules here for first person second person and third person and now look at the changes of adverbs of time that is expressions time expressions here in direct speech you do get words like here now today tonight tomorrow yesterday ago this morning or this week last night or last month or next week or next year then here in indirect speech what you need to do you need to make a few changes here must be changed into there now must be changed into then or immediately today must be changed into that day tonight into that night tomorrow into the next or the following day yesterday must be changed into the day before or the previous day ago must be changed into before this morning must be changed into that morning last night must be changed into the night before next week must be changed into the next or following week so these are all the changes you need to take care of and then say and says it doesn't change at all Whereas say to and says to, you need to go for a change. Say to changes into tell, says to changes into tells. Set, it doesn't change at all. You need to write down the same word. Set to must be changed into told. So these are all the changes here. And now you people do know that we do have five types of sentences. The very first sentence for you here is assertive sentence. Assertive sentence, look at this one. So, uh, she said to her friend, I'm happy. So said to. So here this very first part is known to be reporting. This very first part is known to be reporting speech. Is it not? So reporting speech. This is known to be reporting verb. So here when the reporting verb is in past tense, what you need to do? You need to go for a change in a tense here. So here said to must be changed into told. So she told her friend, drop down the con uh, inverted commas here and insert the conjunction that, that and I changes according, this pronoun I changes according to the subject here. So that she and why do you want to go for a change of this tense here because this reporting verb is in past tense. So you need to change the tense. She was happy. Got it? and then now look at the next one she says to her friend i am happy when the reporting verb is in present tense no need to change the tense at all she tells her friend that she is happy so only thing what you need to do is says to is changed into tells right and then the next example for you uh, before that rule one if the reporting verb is in the present or future tense the tense of the reported speech does not change at all so for present tense and future tense when the reporting verb is in present or future then in that case you don't want to change the uh, tense of the reported speech at all even for universal truth no need to change the tense and for a habitual truth the routine thing for a regular thing, you don't want to change the tense. And then proverbs, even for proverbs, no need to change the tense. The very first example, Chandani will say, Pranesh is a good boy. So will say reporting speech here, the reporting verb is in future tense. So you shouldn't change the tense of this reported speech. 
Chandani will say, Pranesh is a good boy. That's the right sentence, right? And then the next one, look at this proverb, honesty is the best policy. So the teacher says, honesty is the best policy. How to go for a change here? The teacher says that honesty is the best policy. So no change at all. So for uh, proverbs, you don't want to change the tense here. And then the next one. Here, the teacher said the moon revolves around the earth. Universal truth. So even for universal truth, you needn't worry about the changes at all. Only thing you need to write down the same uh, reported speech as such here. The teacher said that the moon revolves around the earth. Only thing is you will be adding the conjunction that. Then the next one, interrogative sentence. Interrogative sentence, you people do know that it's a question type. So there are two types of interrogative sentence. What are they? The very first one is it starts with auxiliary verb or helping verb. What are those helping verbs here? Is was, am, are, where, shall, will. So these all are auxiliary verbs. And then the next one, it starts with WH words, interrogative words. So here how to go about when you get a sentence with WH question, the teacher said to the student, what is your name? See the moment you enter into your a uh, class if you are a new student the very first question from your teacher is this one is it not so the teacher said to the student what is your name so here how to change this direct speech into indirect speech the teacher questioned so said to must be changed into questioned not only questioned even you can go for asked the teacher asked the student what her name was see again drop down this uh, inverted commas and you can start with the same word what but look at this verb order verb order is comes at the last what her what her name was what her name was so the verb order changes in the wh question and needn't worry about inserting conjunction that here in interrogative type no yes or no type question the teacher said to the student are you sleeping especially during uh, afternoon times what does the teacher say the teacher asks you whether you are sleeping is it not so here the teacher said to the student are you sleeping so here Again, set to can be changed into asked. And here what you need to do is, you need to drop down this comma, inverted comma. Then you need to add this word, any of these words, whether or if. So if it is yes or no type question, then in that case, you need to add whether or if he was sleeping. And then the next one for you, imperative sentence. Gautam said to me, keep to the left. You people do know very well what is meant by imperative sentence like requesting, advising or commanding. Yes, all these types of words. Gautam said to me, keep to the left. Gautam advised me. See, this word said to has been changed into advised. Advised me and then you need to add the infinitive to. Two plus base form of the verb to keep to the left. So here reporting verb that is said to must be changed into either requested or ordered or advised. And then you need to add the infinitive to plus base form of a verb. So what is that base form of a verb? V1. Read, learn, run, close. Yes, V1 that is verb 1. Then. If it is a negative sentence, don't keep to the left. Don't keep to the left. Then what, what should you do here? Not or never before the infinitive. So Gautam advised me not to, not to keep to the left. Yes. And then the next one. She said to me, please help me. 
So set to must be changed into requested. Why? Because of this word, please. It's not a commanding one. Please requesting. So she requested me to help her. This pronoun again, it has been changed. Yes. So the next one. Exclamatory sentence. Exclamatory sentence here. She said to me, alas, I could not save you. So here an exclamatory sentence, what you should do, said to must be changed into exclaimed, enjoy or grief or whatever it is, according to this particular word. Here alas denotes that she is sad here. He exclaimed in grief that she could not save me. So she exclaimed in grief that in the place of this one, Alas, you need to uh, add the word that here and I changes according, this pronoun changes according to the subject here. She could not save you. You, second person, changes according to the object here. So that she could not save me. And never to make use of this exclamatory mark here in indirect speech at all. Then, what are all the rules here? Alas, bravo, hooray, and sign. That is this one, exclamatory mark. This sign should be omitted. All these words must be omitted there in indirect speech. What you need to add in the place of set to here in this reporting verb, you need to add exclaimed with joy, exclaimed with sorrow, exclaimed with great wonder. So these phrases must be added there and then the next one optative sentence what is that optative sentence sentence which expresses hope prayer or wish so these are all known to be optative sentences mark of exclamation at the end you could see mark of exclamation at the end here so when it starts with may you need to write down the word prayed when it starts with the word would you need to write down the word wished. So the example for you, may you succeed in the exam. Your teachers wish you, is it not? May you succeed in the exam. So in that case, you need to go for the word prayed. Here is an example for you. He said to me, may you live long. So when you get the word may, what you need to do? You need to write down prayed. He prayed that i might live long so you changes here he prayed that i might live long so this second person changes according to the subject here then i said to him would that you were here on sunday i wished so would when you get the word would then in that case you need to write down wished here in the place of this reporting verb. I wished he had been here on Sunday. And children, the next one. So what are all the changes for tenses here? When present simple comes, you need to change, uh, change into past simple. Present continuous comes, past continuous. Past simple, past perfect. Past continuous, past perfect continuous. Present perfect, past perfect. Past perfect, again the same past perfect, only no need to go for any change at all. So here, she always wears a cap. So simple present is here. He said that she always wore a cap. So here, simple past. I'm looking for my wallet, present continuous. He said that he was looking for his wallet, past continuous. She gave me a candy, simple past. He said that she had given him a candy, past perfect. I was living in London, past continuous. He said that he had been living in London, past perfect continuous. She has owned a cap, present perfect. He said that she had owned a cap, past perfect. The bread had gone stale, past perfect. Again, the same past perfect only. She said that the bread had gone stale right then the next change can should be changed into could 
will should be changed into would, shall into should, may into might, but or must and ought no changes at all. And children, I do believe that you must have understood transforming direct speech into indirect speech very well. And when you want to change indirect speech into direct speech, the reversal process is applicable here. Thank you. Thanks for listening to me patiently. If you do have any doubts, please do uh, comment in the comment box. Please do like, share and subscribe. Bye-bye.